Yeah, he says that. Oh, I thought that was a glass of wine for a minute. I'm jealous. <laughs> oh. Mum life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two o'clock. <laughs> two, two p.m. Pick me up. Oh, that Just before really the funny. school run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, stop it. I don't, I don't drive to the school run. Oh, yeah, good. <laughs> it's probably right. good. Yeah. There you go. All the, all the better idea. Reed, Reed, this is what it's like the whole time. I apologise. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Talking of drink, Izzy, did you take Ricky for, for lunch or was it the other way around? Who paid? I took her for lunch. I paid yeah. the coffee. Reed got the coffee, I got lunch. But we had a recommendation from the, the famous Karen Carney for a cafe slash sort of restaurant in London, which I booked a table for. We turned up at the restaurant and it was like dead. Like, I don't know, we don't even know if it was open, but there was no one in it. That's why and it Karen's just, like, done it. it. It looked, yeah, I was going to say That's it's why you can get a reservation as well. Banter from her. <laughs> That's her kind of place though. She don't like speaking to people. Well, fair. <laughs> Is that where she wrote the review? Yeah. I'm really joking. Somewhere quiet. Yes. Somewhere very quiet. <laughs> it looked nice on Instagram, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, really? it I mean, nice. the, the menu yeah, looked all right. when we got there, it was like, no one at all. I looked inside, like even no waiter. So anything. <laughs> oh, I was going to say at least you got served quickly, but then that no. might have been a problem. I think we would have been serving ourselves. <laughs> now we we went for a pizza instead. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> This is three players in a podcast from Sky Sports. Three players, three topics, and hopefully a podcast out the other end of it. This week, special guests, special bonds, and just specialities. In the company of Special K, Izzy Christiansen, special <laughs> offer, Jen Beatty, and super special smashing great, Rachel Yankee. And all in honor of our special guest and first topic, Ricky Shvecki, who joins us, friend of Izzy's, went out for lunch, stroke coffee, stroke pizza, on Monday. Ricky, lovely to have you with us. What what brings you to the UK? Well, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I wanted to come over and see some of my friends, actually, uh, my agent as well. And then, yeah, obviously talking to you guys. I was going to say, you want to see some of your friends and you end up with us. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> but no. Ree, how about Caroline's like Danish accent as she pronounced your name? Yeah. <laughs> That, that's okay. I'm used to it. No, but you, I thought it was quite good. Oh, really? Because <laughs> you're not Danish. <laughs> I love that already. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to call you Re from well, here what on What was in. it again, Caroline? Do no, it again. I'm, I'm doing Re now. No, you can try again. No, no, I'm not doing it. Oh. I'm not playing this game for any of you. <laughs> Re, it's, it's lovely having you with us. And actually, the, the reason you're able to, to come over and you've got some downtime at, at the moment, and this is is the proper gear change right is you've had to give football up many will remember seeing you light up the WSL with with Everton and clearly that's why you're you're good mates with with Izzy and how brilliant you were on a football pitch but just tell us what happened uh yeah well I recently found out that I have a heart condition uh and re that requires me to stop uh, immediately so yeah that's basically it <laughs> didn't really have a a decision to make or anything uh, so made it kind of easier i would say but uh, still tough yeah yeah i bet it i bet it is tough i know izzy when we all heard the news we were a bit like blimey at such a, a young age for you as a, a teammate to see someone that clearly is talented have to stop what was that like it was a real shock actually because you know i played with with Ree for three years at Everton and, you know, being a close teammate and friend of mine when, you know, she, she announced that she was going to be leaving Everton at the end of the season. And so we played our, our last game together, but we didn't know it was Ree's last game at the time. So I obviously finished playing at the end of May last year and, you know, on the pitch, it was emotional saying goodbye to the fans and being with, you know, my teammates and stuff, but we didn't know that that was Ree's last game as well. For Everton, of course. And obviously, I know you went to the World Cup, but playing together. And I know, you know, Ree being a top defender who had ambitions to go and play in the Champions League um, and then go and play, you know, in other leagues in the world. I knew, you know, how successful she was going to be. And then obviously I, I saw you out in Australia, didn't I, in Perth? And we grabbed a quick drink together in their team hotel down in Perth. And 
you know, still didn't know what was going on. And then I was at their game against Australia in the uh, round of 16. And then when Re told me, I remember I was out for dinner with my parents actually. And she texted me and said, um, is you free? And like, it was a, like not a text I'd normally get, you know, from Re. <laughs> I'd, you know, we'd normally just have a conversational text and I kind of sensed something was up. Um, so I texted her back and then literally I was on, we were on the phone, weren't we? Um, yeah. I think we were on the phone within like 10, 15 minutes and she explained to me what had happened. And obviously at this point it was confidential and, you know, I'd kept it to myself, but I couldn't really believe it. And I was with my parents at the time and they know me cause you've been up to the Lake district and, you know, visited, met my parents at loads of different matches, you know, over the last three years. So, um, they couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I was just. I don't know with me and bad or even good news sometimes it takes a while for me to like it to resonate with me and I think it's like literally until I've seen Re in person like two days ago obviously we've been in contact all the time over text but to actually visibly see each other it's kind of like really sunk into me now and like I, I can't really believe it to be honest um but as a friend I'm literally so proud of her for already getting your feet back on on the floor and, you know, going and exploring different avenues and using all the talents that you've got in other areas. But I mean, fundamentally, I'm just, I don't know, dotted for you because of how, how good you were at football. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was really nice. Just... That's all right. Can be nice sometimes. Always crying. <laughs> Really, just just on that, obviously, f- from what Izzy said and kind of the process that that it all happened, like we as kind of football players, especially females in the game, right? We always have a kind of or try to have a backup plan because mm. we always kind of say we need to go into something else. I, I know you've been doing the second half with with Visa, and I know that's probably been super helpful. But did you have a plan? I know because when it, we always, we never know what age we're going to play until, right? Whether it's injury or, or whatever circumstance. And yours has obviously been very, quite abrupt and maybe not within your plan. So what kind of, what avenues have you gone down? Could you like talk us a bit about the second half? Because that's such an interesting thing for people to go into. And you know, what, what is your sort of next ideas? Yeah. Well, I, I think you're absolutely right about like being a female footballer and obviously you have to think about the future after football. Mm-hmm. And yeah, while playing, I was actually thinking about and trying different studies, uh, did architecture and design, I did um, some positive psychology and yeah, some teaching as well. So I tried different areas just to figure out what I like outside of football. Um, and that's actually also what we do with the second half. Uh, I don't know if you've done it before, if any of you have, have tried it. No. No, but I, I know teammates that have done it and they yeah. speak so highly of it, which is why I was like, when I read, yeah, about yeah. what you were doing, I was like, yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, um, I think it's like 20 uh, players, all retired players. It can be both. Um, and then we just have different sessions. Uh, it can be um, regarding LinkedIn maybe, or it can be, telling your story, how to tell it to different people, uh, audiences, and uh, yeah, about networking and using your connections within the football world, but also outside of it. Um, And then Visa actually helps you try to do like a mentorship or also an internship as well. Yeah, I find it very good and uh, I'm still doing it now. To to paint a picture to everyone listening, I found when I was at Everton, there was a very well, there was a very um, large Scandinavian contingent of teammates. And whenever you travel to an away game on a bus with tables on, yeah, the, Scan- the Scandinavians are always studying. You know, they come onto the bus with mm. big wedges of paper and big books from the library and, you know, they get their laptops out and they start studying. But it was only the Scandinavians. Yeah. And really... Yeah, I, I don't know if you had this at Arsenal or or whatever, but I, I think it's really interesting. People from different cultures and different countries that yeah. you know they've you know different sort of mindset in terms of like you said, resetting setting yourself up for something else. Mm. Did you do you think that this has maybe made this really you know nasty horrible situation for you you know a point one percent easier because you've got um, 
you know, you've got that studying mindset and you've got that inquisitive, you know, brain to go and study or learn or figure out something new. Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially in, in Denmark playing, like it's not professional. So when you're playing, you're still studying or you're working and then you train at night. Uh, so I think like coming from that, you're used to it. So when I came to England, I still wanted to do something next to football uh, and it just felt natural to do that. One of the things you've looked at is making sure that particularly for for women playing the game, that there are more tests because your heart was only picked up properly, wasn't it, when when you went to do a medical? Mm. It's, it's something that really surprised me that more was not done and that that doesn't happen. Is that what you found, Re, that, that actually that's just not happening? Because to think of what might have happened to you and how close you were if you had gone and played another game to things being completely different, I mean, is... Yeah. It's mind blowing. Yeah. I mean, I never would have known when something could have happened. Uh, uh, so, but it was actually in Italy. Um, Italy is very strict uh, with their rules uh, mm. regarding heart. So, when you go there to play, you have to get checked out by a doctor and they need to sign off that you are able to play and, yeah, check all the boxes. Um, and that's when they found out about me because I did a stre- stress ECG. Uh, and we haven't done that while I played at Everton. That was just normal ECG and echocardiogram. What I have is extra heartbeats. So they come and go like in phases. Right, okay. Which means I could be laying down, resting and not having it, but I can also have it. Right. But the thing is, when you stress your heart, then you have more of them. And that's why it's easier to find or detect in a stress ECG than in just in a resting one okay. with my condition. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's different from person to person and condition to condition. So, yeah, that's why I've been trying to figure out like, if there's something we can do uh, with the rules or yeah, change something, uh, help the clubs, uh, put more resources in to do more testing because I, I think it's... Yeah, it's it's crazy that we risk our health, uh, obviously, in playing, and it's fun, and we do it because we love it, but then there should also be the resources that makes it safe for us. And what what I found really interesting, Re, that you've told me since, obviously, this, this happened was mm-hmm. how now, obviously, you have to keep your heart rate low. So that means yeah. in terms of physical activity, you can't really do much, can you? No, not as much as when you're playing. Mm. Uh, I'm allowed to go for a jog or play paddle tennis or uh, badminton, like enjoy myself with different activities, but I'm not allowed to train every single day and play a game in the weekend because that would stress my heart too much uh, because of being in the red zone all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. No, it's so interesting. Yeah, so it's a different lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just ask you, did you, did you feel absolutely fine? Yeah. Before all of those tests, you were absolutely fine. I didn't feel anything. Yeah. So when I went to Italy, like we were just there, me, my boyfriend and Asian, and we were all like, what's going on? Yeah. Because I, I didn't feel anything. I didn't have any symptoms. And and is it is it the classic case of, I mean, I, I don't want this to sound bad, but a lot of the men's teams get that test, but maybe because the resources aren't there in the women's teams, is it an extra cost? Is it an extra expense that that's why women's teams don't do it? Or did, does anyone know why we don't actually? Well, I guess it comes down to resources and like yeah. how, again, how much money you want to spend on the different teams. Yeah. Cause I actually, I know the test you're talking about and I did it for the first time before coming out here. Yeah. And it, cause I'd be the exact same as you. I did, would have done echo and ECG but it was the one under stress. So I was on a treadmill running on an incline mm. and, and I was still attached to the machine. And this that was my first time doing it. And I remember thinking, you know, why don't, why haven't we done this before? Why, why don't, why aren't other clubs doing this? Cause we are, we're athletes, you know, we're not at rest. We're, we're, mm. we're tr- and I, I got sent for that further test because of something else that had, had come up. So it was kind of like, why have I not why am I 32, you know, and just doing this now? It was quite a weird Mm -hmm. moment, but, you know, I I definitely know the feeling of when you're the one that something comes up and you're then the reason why everyone else gets tested. So fingers crossed, you can raise a much, you know, 
talk about it as much as you can because that, that is genuinely what pushes clubs to then get the resource and help other athletes so what you're doing is is genuinely like amazing it's not easy to talk about it. you've yeah. had to retire yeah. early and it's difficult yeah so you're dealing with your own emotions how are you going about that that process re of trying to um really push for the stress ecgs to be part of the game now well i did uh, an article with fifth point mm-hmm. and trying to figure out if we can do more uh, to yeah raise awareness about it but also try and change it because right now i think there's like different rules but it's only for world cup or euro so mm. clubs are placed in the champions league um and then it's different from league to league do you think people have already taken note because of your story and what happened to you? I, I hope so. I think if <laughs> it, it would have happened to someone else and I have seen it and heard about it, I might have would want to get checked myself. Mm. Such a key point that you made, Jen, about being the first to try and have to to push this through and then the load that's on your shoulders because at the same time as, I guess, Ree, you're dealing with the fact you've had this diagnosis, you can't play football, and then to try and put it, channel that into something positive, when I imagine a lot of the time you just want to do a, you know, your family put an arm around you and and actually mm. just sometimes go into yourself. So to to try and push it into a positive, have you, have you found that's helped? Yeah, I actually think that helped me a lot and still are. Uh, I think turning a bad situation into something positive or trying to make a difference or help others then that actually helps me i mean what what you're saying it relates to massively like i was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer in 2020 and the way i dealt with it was raising awareness okay i didn't have to stop playing football but the biggest thing for me was normalizing the conversation because people don't necessarily talk about those kind of things and same with you like it's a, it's a test something came up and you've had to stop playing football, which is horrendous. And you'll be dealing with your own emotions within that. And I know what you mean by you're now the person that has to push other people to get tests or or raise it in clubs. Because off the back of my diagnosis, now everyone at Arsenal gets cervical screenings. They get breast screenings every year. And it's you never want to be the person that goes through it. But if that makes change at a club, then you've, you, you know, by raising awareness and by doing that, so... Just keep, honestly, keep talking about it. What you've done with FIFA Pro, I read the article, it was brilliant. You hit all, like, everything you want to speak about is so important. And if that pushes more clubs to keep doing it, like, and 100%, I hope it does sort of help your rationale with the way you process it. And, you know, because it'll, it'll help you talk about it. Yeah, It'll help you talk about it even more. It won't be in, within your own head or just between friends and families. It'll kind of externalize it and and help hopefully help you process it because it's not just about you it's about the well it is about you but it's about the conversation as well and I think that's probably the the most valuable thing of what you're doing for other people and yeah hopefully everyone listens and, and kind of takes notes especially the big clubs because they're the kind of ones that can really push things forward yeah and not just football clubs but people listening to this right now that might think you yeah. can go and get something checked mm. so thank you both of you uh, for what you continue to do in in speaking out. You are listening to Three Players and a podcast. We mentioned right at the start of the show that Izzy uh, had taken you out to a very expensive restaurant that was shut. Um, but we're going to talk <laughs> in topic two about special bonds, how football gets you together as mates in honour of your mate, Izzy. Um, Re, how, how important has it been? And Jen, you can touch on this too, like, when you've been in this moment of the worst happening of having your friends from football around you? Yeah, I, I feel like it was actually almost at the same time as Isu, Isu was retiring as well. So it wasn't the same reason we, we retired, but you still go through the same kind of emotions. And it actually helped me a lot having yeah Is and also Nico uh, who retired uh, recently. Um, and I think I, I have a hard time watching football, especially in the beginning, but it's getting better now. Uh, but that's why it's nice to have yeah, different f- friends within the football world, but also outside of it and people who've been through similar situations. Uh, 
because they kind of know what you're going through in your mind. Yeah, Nico Sorensen, uh, former Everton player as, as well. Jen, was that important for you, you know, when, when in those those really tough moments to have those friends from Arsenal around you, to have those football teammates? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, look, I, I think obviously when you go through the really hard times, 100%, but like, I don't, I, I just want to kind of reiterate that everyone goes through really difficult stuff and it's not just one or two people in each team. Everyone's going through their own thing, whether it's, and nine out of 10 times, the majority of people are, are away from friends, they're away from family, you know, they're not in their native country where they can't just pop round to their parents for dinner or, you know, go see their friends from school. It's like, oh, sometimes all you have are your teammates mm. and like it's the bonds that you do build I mean, I always say over COVID was probably the closest the closest we ever got to teammates because it was that was literally all you could see. They were your bubble, and you know, I think definitely at Arsenal we've had big injuries over the past few years. Of course, I had my stuff going on. Beth Mead went through a lot, losing her mum, and we kind of just became this unbelievably tight knit group. And you know, it was lucky enough that they're all incredible people and. I always extend it to the staff as well because they are they are part of it. They're they're huge with with checking in. Ria, I, I hope you've had a similar experience with with staff from Everton. Continue to check in now, and I hope you have that support beyond um, through into retirement as well. But it's massive. Like so I I say it all the time. Some my my best mates are are from from football and from from outside. But the bonds that you build because they they see you day day in day out, and they're the ones that really really have the 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 really difficult conversations because they're the ones going through similar things or, or exact same processes or we have the same sort of resources and it's it is like my I mean my dad's from rugby as well right and my dad was always the one to kind of say um you know really look after those relationships in football because they're the ones that come 70 you'll meet up and have reunions and it'll just be the most fun and you'll speak about memories from the pitch memories off the pitch injuries everything the best times and the worst times and that's kind of he kind of always instilled that in me and it's something that I absolutely love about sport that's always why I always say I think I fell into team sports um because it's kind of teams for life or mates for life um but 100% you, you you go through the best and worst times with teammates and that the bonds that you share like I'm still trying to FaceTime them from back home, but this time difference absolutely <laughs> killing me. It's <laughs> Is it nine hours? It's seven at the minute, but your clocks um, are going to go forward again. It's going to be at eight. Yeah. So yeah. I'll phone you at the weekend and it'll be eight. I'll, be, I'll still try and phone you. <laughs> Rachel, are you still top buttoning Jen? Is that what's going on? You're screening your calls against her for FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> That's harsh. Never would I do that. Never. She just doesn't call me. <laughs> <Already missing. laughs> call me, man, call me. <laughs> Are you a phone caller or a WhatsApper? Oh, I'm a phone caller. I can't be dealing Are with... You? Yeah. Are you a voice noter? Yeah, I could probably do... Oh, no, don't go there, <laughs> no. Well, it's easier, isn't it? When you're busy and it just takes time messaging, I just, like, bang. you got to speed up, though. You can, you, my favourite thing, you can speed up a voice me- note, and that's the best thing I've ever, like, figured out. <laughs> to listen to them <laughs> quick. If someone sends me over a two-minute voice note, Leah, like, Leah Walty loves a voice note, and I swear they're about four minutes long, <laughs> and they, I, sometimes I'm at 2.5 speed. <laughs> <laughs> and you text her back and go what did you mean yeah. <laughs> I'm not a voice noter oh. no? nah. are you one of those ones that sends when you send your whatsapps do you send them line at a time or do you just like write well um, sometimes yeah because I find that really sometimes, annoying yeah. like, <laughs> it's like just get out what you got to say man just no line at a time <laughs> and it's like just get to the point like Hey, how's it going? Yeah. That would annoy you. I feel like that's more appropriate for iMessage, like the sort of hi, what are you up to or something. Whereas WhatsApp feels a bit more like closer to an email maybe. 
You've gone deep into that. Your WhatsApps it? might be. <laughs> yeah. Rhea, what do you think? you got to solve that one, Rhea. Yeah. I'm just so <laughs> confused by that WhatsApp thing. <laughs> don't, don't listen to me. But you guys use Facebook Messenger, don't you? Us? Yeah. I feel like all the Danes yeah. were always on Facebook Messenger texting each other. Yeah, that's true. But that might be more for like our parents. Oh, fair. Like it's, it's <laughs> more old. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Like that's why I communicate with my mom. On Facebook? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but then sometimes I try and put it in an iMessage just to make them come over there. Right, Because yeah. it's a bit easier. Yeah. <laughs> but... Jen, have you kept in touch with the Arsenal girls since you've um, moved? Have you managed to speak to them? Yeah, no, I have. I've, like, I quite like, obviously, group WhatsApps are brilliant, right? And I <laughs> I just love a phone call. Like, texting, I'm not that great either. I'm not the best texter, whereas, like, I like phoning people. So when I when I wake up in the morning, so pretty much now, what like it's, like, mid-afternoon, right? I literally just go down my list and just phone people, whether it's, like... <laughs> Just have a little um, look. Yeah. Who should I get today? <laughs> yeah, like I've, got, I've got a group chat with them, um, Beth and Steph, and I've definitely rang them way more times than they've rang me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but yeah, no, I like I love I love a FaceTime. I love a call. I'm not the best WhatsApper or a messenger, but yeah, I've tried to because um, I'll see them when I get back. But definitely, I love I love catching up, and they've had loads of big games recently so it's been cool catching up with them but yeah i love a facetime love a whatsapp call <laughs> prime time for me is right now so i'll probably try ring them when i got off here so i see if they answer now yeah go on yeah go on that'd be fun <laughs> who, who are we facetiming i've got a group with steph and beth so i'm gonna try and... i'm gonna crack up if you get okay. cut off <laughs> <laughs> they blocked the call <laughs> i can't t- the one thing i can't show you is what the group's called oh that's fine Okay. I think you're getting pied. Are they training? Yeah. They're not training. <laughs> 20 to 3. Steph's at training. Beth's at training. Oh, they're well no, finished. It should, by be, now. it should be prime time, coffee time. But yeah, having their coffee, looking at the phone, going, nah. Yeah, yeah, and be like, oh, she's you're phony again. You're getting texted an hour going, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't see your call. Yeah, right, you're on Instagram, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's enough They're rings not there. Answering, are they? yeah. They're not answering. They're not coming to you. <laughs> this feels quite sad, actually. I'm sorry, Jen. I'm sorry. Sorry. Right. Jen, no mates. <laughs> Listen, they might phone me back. It's early days. Hopefully. We'll leave it there. Uh, <laughs> this is three players and a podcast. Four players this week. We'll go to our final topic, um, which is on this special show of very special people. We're going to talk about specialists. At least what happens when you change leagues. This is all because of the NWSL being back, Jen playing a couple of games already, almighty Jen Beatty back on the pitch. Uh, The WSL is reaching its peak as well. And you've all sort of played in other leagues around the world. So what is the specialist of the specialists in the world, as it were? What what were the best leagues that you played in and what did you find different sort of coming to the WSL? Yeah, I actually think the one in here in England uh, is the best league I've played in. Um, I didn't get to play in the U.S. because um, obviously I had to retire. Uh, but yeah, I, I was looking forward to that because it's high tempo and very athletic people who play there. <laughs> Jen, you looking? She was looking at you, Jen, and she said that. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, Re, gotta go, gotta Re. go to the gym. <laughs> Rhea, I knew I was gonna like you, you know. <laughs> Oh, centre back, centre back yeah. union. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You two would make a good centre back pairing, actually. By the way, mm-hmm. just saying. Yeah. Sorry, coach's mind on um, here. We'll, Playing we'll out, we'll definitely play. Out. You, de- you definitely play out from the back. That's for sure. Nice. Yeah. Well, yes. What's it, what's playing out from the back? What is playing out from the back? Oh yeah. This was what our conversation was about over pizza on Monday. <laughs> what is playing out from the back? What is pressing? <laughs> What was it? What was the answer? I'm desperate to know the answer. And then Re goes to me. Yeah, I don't really like talking football. <laughs> <laughs> All these like, girls oh, use talk football. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And then I get on the train and go home and download a game and watch a game back. Yeah. <laughs> Re's like, is he? I'm actually going through a really hard time right now. I don't want to speak about football. Yeah. <laughs> How can I tell her to shut up? <laughs> Nicely. <laughs> What would you, because 
Jen, Ree, you both played in France and I've played in France as well. What would you say are the main differences between the French league and the WSL? The gap from the bottom team to the top team. Yeah. Mm. Like the competitiveness. Yeah. Do you think that's improved lately though, in the last few years or? Yeah, since I was there, uh, which is what, four years ago, three years ago? Yeah. What about like resources and training facilities and and stuff like that? Yeah, the facilities are definitely better in England. (laughs) (laughs) It was, uh, well, I played at a team called Fleury. uh, And obviously, Izzy, you were at Lyon, which is very different. Our pitch was really bad and Lyon was the best pitch there was. Yeah, there was more bubbles on Fleury's pitch than Claire's accessories. (laughs) 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 <laughs> but, um, <dumb. laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. Rachel, what did you find was the difference? I know like it was slightly poor when you went to play in America, it was slightly before it had gone pro as it were. I'd say the style was more designed on your athletic ability rather than your technical ability. So it was quite transitional, um, the game, but I don't want to say robotic and sort of structured but it was they were quite it wasn't as I feel like in in England it was probably more free-flowing the the players and 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 some of the players and the styles of how they played it was a bit more structured and but but more safe sort of structure playing out in America back then I, I mean, I don't know what it's like now. I suppose it would be probably different because there's so many different different players from other countries and cultures and and everything going over to the league. So so maybe it's maybe it's slightly changed. But but yeah, definitely. I think if you were a player that liked to get on the ball and like dribble, like like I mean, I thought it was great. Like you get the ball and run at people. They 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 weren't used to that. <laughs> they weren't used to it at all. So um, so yeah, it was like you know, give us the ball. Um, yeah, they, that that had frightened players. They weren't they weren't used to that. So, but yeah, I'm not sure what. Well, obviously, Jen, what would would it would it be like now? I know. I was going to ask Reed. Did did you get a chance to train with Portland before? You... No, no, but no. Well, I mean, I saw a couple of the games before I signed for them yeah. as well, uh, and where the training facilities. Mm. But yeah, I I feel like the league over there has evolved from going to very direct and uh, fast where now it's also playing out from the back and yeah. building that play and yeah and then still being direct when it's necessary uh, mm. but a good mix of both yeah i think i think you're right i think there it's been interesting seeing like like esther does really well for new jersey and Henri for for angel city you kind of seeing those kind of players that have come from from europe and and trying to play a different different style but honestly like you can people can say it's it's high speed and it's high pressure and and transitional but when until you're in it you don't really understand how that feels and like mm-hmm. that that game for me at the weekend playing against spirit it was honestly like a welcome to the end it the pace that they press you at is unlike anything i'd ever experienced in in france in england wow like it was like and honestly, like, as I'm not joking, when, you know, when centre-backs just play back and forth because you're trying to wait for that, the crowd start booing you. The crowd starts booing? The crowd starts booing you because that's not what they want to see. And I'm not talking about home fans, I'm talking about away, because we were away at Spirit. Yeah. But, like, they just want to see attacks, I think. Or, like, they want to see you go at it. Or, like, yeah. maybe they were booing because they weren't pressing at that time. But, like, I was like, oh, wow, we're being booed for just playing, like, boring passes. <laughs> Like <laughs> it was kind of one of those moments where I was like, we were trying to bit play possession based football in a different style, and it was like, obviously that takes time because that's it's it's new for us as a team. But to be booed, I was like, whoa, that was like because it's obviously different. I was going to ask you actually about that because there are, I, th- I th- correct me if I'm wrong, but they are one of the teams in the NWSL who have been vocal about how they want to play, which is playing out from the back. And, you know, sort of more of a possession-based football, which NWSL fans are probably not used to seeing. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why 
I jumped at this opportunity is because I had, you know, man, the manager that was adamant that that was the kind of style of football he wanted to play. And, you know, I don't think I would have suited the transitional style of football because that's not what I enjoy trying to play or at least trying to play. Um, but no, we, we have been really vocal as a team. It's been kind of part of our brand with, with what we wanted to do, not just as a club, but on the pitch as well. And even it goes as far back as like our investments and what other clubs we invest in from Sixth Street, our actual investors, they invest in Barcelona, they invest in Real Madrid. So that kind of Spanish style of football is kind of ingrained in what we're trying to do on the pitch. So it is very different to what this league may be used to seeing, but I don't know. I think it also comes as quite, when, when teams say high press and, and transitional, it comes across quite negative. Like it's not as good, but it is so difficult. Like it's such a hard league to play in. I actually spoke a, a bit to, um, I know Laura Harvey from being back in England and we kind of said, you know, like, yeah, try and come out here. It's, it's hard. It's not just transitional and fast. It's it's really, really difficult to even try and play that that brand of football. So it's not as if you can play that brand of football and be like plain sailing. It's really, really difficult, but that's something that we're definitely trying to do as a team and a club. But yeah, I think a lot of, leagues in Europe have a lot of similarities and this is probably the one that's maybe the most different um I think the, the college system out here just breeds absolute athletes mm. like they're they're incredible with what what they the pace the athleticism the way they can run it is unbelievable they're just they come out of college and they're just athletes it's the intensity of the games when you say you know teams press high and they'll come af- after you hard does that is that minute one to minute 90 or yeah. is that from the start of the game and uh, from what you've experienced so far with three three games in two or three games in do the managers tend to make changes to sustain that intensity or is that just deeply ingrained in the players that they can press at that intensity for 90 minutes that's a good question it's definitely ingrained in the players that you can do it for 90 minutes and whether that is like becomes tactical changes towards the end of the game but is I'm not joking they'll go from minute one to minute 90 of high Mm. press they want to win the ball back they want to keep that pressure on and to be honest we're we're kind of the same as well that's the kind of brand Mm. of football that we want to you don't want to allow teams to gain sort of any momentum in a game and I don't know if that is maybe similar to because sometimes I still think that is an English club thing as well, wanting to, to press, try and high press mm-hmm. for a lot of the game. But sometimes you have to be like, right, hang on. Mm-hmm. If we're not set up yeah. properly, you have to bring it back and do a mid block. Well, I was going to apologise to Ree because this is what she tried to avoid at lunch and we've kind of just put her on for <laughs> I was just about to ask her another to football question. To you <laughs> yeah, well, That's don't. Okay. You can't. We've run out of time. Um, oh. but, but no, we actually have run out of time. Uh, but before we go, Ree, and I'm not just doing that to stitch <laughs> Izzy up, um, how are you? What? Where can we see you next? And are you going to come and join us? And we promise not to talk more football. Maybe come and see us over here in, in the UK again sometime soon. Yeah, hopefully. Tell them where you're going tonight, Ray. To the Chelsea Ajax game. She's going to a football match. <laughs> yeah. Ray. Actually, my first uh, feet, like women's football game since I retired. So it's going to be exciting. <laughs> I'm glad you see it as exciting as it, because yeah, it, it, it's been, t- I know you spoke before about it's been tough watching football again, right? So mm. is, does it feel a bit yeah. like a fresh start? Yeah, uh, I think the toughest part has been the national team, uh, seeing someone else playing in my number and yeah, all those emotion that comes with that. But I have been watching some of Everton's games because I still have friends there and it will be exciting tonight, I think. Well, you're welcome to come back and and listen to this lot talk football anytime you like. Um, And it's good to see you. (laughs) Thank Thank you you so much for joining us. I'm off to boo at Gen BT and maybe join the special branch. (laughs) Never boo at Gen BT. Uh, Thank you all. This is Three Players and a Podcast. Do get in touch. Use the hashtag 3PP. Until next time, bye for now. Jennifer, I love you so much and I miss you so much and I'm sorry about the echo, I'm just laid in bath. Bye.